Hey guys, today we're making these snowflake pillows. I've seen them around in the store and online and they can be pretty expensive, anywhere from $30 to $80. So I figured this would be a fun project for us to do. I'm starting with one yard of white canvas and my pillow forms are 16 inches. So I'm gonna add one inch to those dimensions and cut out a 17 inch square piece of fabric. And then the next piece, this is gonna be the back. I'm cutting out the same dimension, 17, but I'm gonna add five more inches to one of the ends. And then I'm gonna fold that piece of fabric over after I've cut it out and cut that in half. So basically I have one 17 inch square piece and then I have one 17 by 22 piece that I'm cutting in half. So that is going to be the back and it's gonna envelope over each other. So let's get on to the next part here. I have a wax paper and I'm gonna cut out a piece, well I'm not gonna cut it out, I'm gonna tear it out, a piece of wax paper and I want this to be a square. Doesn't matter what size, but just to make sure it's squared off, I'm just gonna fold over one corner and that's gonna show me what I need to trim off to get my perfect square. And once that's squared off, we're ready to get folding our wax paper. And now let's begin folding. So it's our square piece of wax paper. Bring one corner over to the other corner. So we're folding it in half diagonally and then folding it in half diagonally again. So I'm keeping note of where the center of the square is, which is at the very top of our screen there. And now I'm folding it in thirds. So I'm folding one triangle over and then the other piece I'm folding behind. So it's kind of like a accordion paper airplane that you might have made in school one day many years ago. All right, now that our accordion airplane is ready to go, we're gonna begin cutting it. So I'm taking my scissors and I'm just making some little cuts and trims here. And you're just gonna be working on the two edges. So whatever you want them to be, you can kind of just play around. I'm just cutting out some notches on one side, all kind of facing the same direction. And then it looks like that. On the other side, I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, just cut out a few more notches, but sort of make them more rounded, maybe some diamonds, who knows. So just play around with it. That's kind of the beauty of it being a snowflake is they're all one of a kind. Now I'm trimming those little centers. So it's gonna open up that little section so the paper won't be connected and I'm also doing that on the other side so just trimming off uh, some of that paper and then when I open it up you'll see what I mean all right so here is my snowflake design now it's time to go outside because we're using some spray adhesive so this is 3m super 77 my favorite spray adhesive and I'm just gonna coat this lightly on one side of the wax paper and then I'm gonna let it sit and dry for about three minutes before I actually use it. This is how I turn my regular spray adhesive into repositionable spray adhesive. Just by letting it dry down a little, it takes some of that stickiness away so it's not so permanent. And then lightly press your piece of wax paper, your snowflake design over your fabric. I'm also using a little bit of plastic wrap around the outer edges of my fabric. Anywhere that you don't wanna get paint, make sure you cover that. I'm using Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in One. This is in titanium silver. I love this stuff. I use it for all kinds of projects. And I just lightly mist over the snowflake Flake, or our snowflake stencil basically is what this is and so I'm not getting too heavy in any one area just doing a lot of little light mists and that'll help it to dry quickly and kind of keep the design kind of light and not too heavy I let the paint set for about three to five minutes and then started removing the plastic wrap. And then I just grab the corner of the wax paper and pull that up. It will tear a little bit here and there. Uh, it doesn't usually come up in one piece just because it's a delicate paper. But don't worry about that. You can tear it off piece by piece. Just be careful not to get any transfer onto your fingers and then accidentally touch your fabric where you don't want paint. So if you just watch out for that, you should be good. And then just lay your fabric someplace safe so it can dry completely before you get working with it. So I let mine dry overnight and now we're ready to get hemming. So right now we're working on one of the back pieces. We're hemming just these two edges of our back envelope flap because they're gonna be visible. So we're just using a regular straight stitch and beginning and ending with a back stitch. And then once both of those back pieces are done, we're gonna lay our fabric out pretty sides in. So pretty sides facing each other. So I have my snowflake pattern on the underneath side. That's gonna be the front of my pillow. I'm laying over one of the back pieces, one of the envelope pieces, and then the other. So you can see how the layout's gonna be. 
And then pin your fabric into place and you can sew with a regular straight stitch, again beginning and ending with a back stitch. And when you're sewing and you come to a corner, you can just lift your presser foot, turn the fabric, and drop the presser foot back down. And then continue sewing. We're sewing with a half inch seam allowance. And then for the corners, after you get done sewing, you don't want your corners to be all bulky and frumpy, so just trim off those corners just outside of your stitching. And that'll help give you kind of prettier, softer corners on your pillows. And then just flip your new pillow cover inside out. And now you can stand back and take a look at your wondrous work of making a envelope pillow. So there's the back. There's the front, and now let's go find the pillow form. Okay, so here it is, 16 inch pillow form. Got this at Walmart for, I don't know, a few dollars or so. And then there it is inside its new pillow cover. Since I already had most of the supplies to do this project and I actually only needed the pillow insert, this project cost me less than $5, which is awesome considering how much snowflake pillows go for in the stores and online. And since I used a metallic paint, it just adds that little bit of fine sparkle, which adds a nice touch to your winter decor. I decided to make a second snowflake pillow and this time I want to make it a little more sparkly so I thought, hey, let's use some sequins and see what we can do with this. Okay, so I start with a needle and thread, just any old needle and thread will do. A nice small needle that can fit through seed beads though. We're going to be using these seed beads, um, these sequins in two sizes. I have the really small ones and the medium size. And this is the pattern I laid out of my sequins. So first I just laid everything out and then I'm gonna snap a picture of it so I can remember the pattern. And we're gonna get to work here. So the first thing to do is knot the end of your thread. And then we're gonna poke through. I'm poking through the very center. That's where I'm gonna start. And I'm gonna thread on one of my sequins. This is the medium size I'm starting with in the center. And then I'm gonna thread on a seed bead. And once that's on there, I'm going to scoot that seed bead just out of the way just a little bit and poke my needle back down through the hole of the sequin and pull it out the other side. And that's going to lock the sequin and the seed bead into place. Now you can knot off after each time or each section, whatever you want to do. I knot it off in the center and then I'll show you later. I just do it section by section so I don't knot after every sequin just after every maybe leg or section of my snowflake. So I'll show you later though. So here we go, I just threaded on another sequin and another seed bead, pull my thread through, go back down through this, the hole of the sequin. And one quick tip for this is make sure that you are not going back down through the same hole that you came through because I noticed that does tend to happen, um, at least in the canvas. Okay, so here we go. Poking through the back side, slipping my sequin on, slipping on my seed bead, and pulling up my needle through, and then going back down through the hole of the sequin. And then to knot off at the very end, or at the end of each section, whatever you like, I just slip it through this little loop. So I'll show you one more time. So after we tighten that up, I slip through my stitch, my last stitch, pull my needle through, and that loop that's created when you pull through, just slip in there again. And so I just do that a couple of times and then snip off any extra threads. And so now you can see my pattern of where I knotted off each time. So I just did short little sections. And each of these are also their own separate sections. I would start a new thread for each one and knot off at the end. I hope you guys like this project and if you give it a try, definitely send me some pics because I would love to see. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.